Okay, we're going to look at uh, a very special kind of signal called the complex exponential signal. And it's a signal of the form Ke to the st, where s is complex. S belongs to complex and k is a real. k belongs to real. And so because s is complex, we're going to say s equals sigma plus j omega. And uh, therefore, we can write k e to the s t as k, sorry, k e to the sigma plus j omega t, which we can expand as k e to the sigma t e to the j omega t. And this using the expansion for e to the j omega t is going to be k e to the sigma t cos omega t plus j sine omega t. And then expanding one more is k e to the sigma t cos omega t plus k e to the sigma t j k to the sigma t sine omega t. And the reason why I'm writing it this way is because we can now separate out the real part over here and this part is the imaginary part of the complex part over here. And in fact, this is a function of time. So t here is a function, is, is a cos omega t is a sinusoid of, of time. This is a function of time. And of course, e to the sigma t is also functions of time. So these are functions of time. So this value over here lies in the real t plane, time plane. And this over here lies in the imaginary t plane. And uh, by setting various values of sigma, and omega, or, or for that matter s, uh, we can actually obtain a very complicated set of signals, but they all reduce, can all be expressed in the same form of either k e to the s t, or it can be, or k e to the s t plus k e to the minus s t. And I'll show how that works in just a moment. So let's take a look at the simplest case over here where we are setting s equals zero. So s equals zero, which means k e to the s t is going to be equal to k e to the zero equals k. So it's a constant and it's a real constant which belongs to real. And so it's going to be lying in the real t plane. So this is the real t plane and you can see it's a value which is always the same and that value over here is k. So that's what's shown over here, and it has no imaginary competence at all. So that doesn't lie on the real axis. And normally we would draw this like this. We would say here's time, here's the value of the function, and it's constant, and this value is k. Okay, now what we do is let's set omega equals zero. Remember omega is sort of the frequency at which we're saying, uh, at which uh, the signal is uh, is oscillating and we're saying omega equals zero means it's not oscillating at, at, oscillating at all. And we can see that this is going to reduce to k e to the sigma t, which is this graph over here. And of course, this belongs to the reals as well. So it lies in the real t plane. This is this real t plane over here. And it's the exponential. Again, if we were to draw it normally in our just in the real plane, it would be like this, and we would have starting zero and going exponentially. This is what we would think of as the exponential function uh, normally. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set sigma equals zero, and I will also choose two values of s, s equals plus minus j omega. Uh, and uh, by choosing these two values of s, what I will get is s equals plus minus j omega. I'll get the function k e to the j omega t plus k e to the minus j omega t. And uh, a simplification of this, it's easy to show that this will reduce to 2k cos omega t. And in fact, the imaginary components are going to go away. 
And so again, this is a value that lies purely in the real T plane. And it is a sinusoid which has a amplitude of 2K. And we see that over here, that's the sinusoid. Again, if I were to draw it, quote unquote, normally, it would be looking like this. The function is over here, and this is my sinusoid, which lies in the, because this is the real plane over here. Now, what happens if I set a sigma not equal to zero, sigma not equal to zero, and now I'm going to choose two special values of s. I'm going to set s equals sigma plus minus j omega. And so when we do this, what happens is that we are going to get uh, a little bit of math shows that it's going to be equal to 2k e to the sigma t cos omega t. Now, it's worth understanding is it's sort of in pieces. So this part over here is just a sinusoid. And so that's the same as that sinusoid that we saw earlier. This is on the, on the left-hand side. So the same as that sinusoid over there. And this part over here is an exponential scaling, which is going up exponentially like this one over here. And if you multiply these two together, you get this function over here. It starts out small. And as time increases, the sinusoid grows larger and larger and sort of goes exponentially scaling up. And that comes essentially from setting s equals sigma plus minus j omega. In other words, we're doing, we're going to have the function uh, uh, k e to the sigma plus j omega t plus k e to the power sigma minus j omega t. So it's not just k e to the st, it's the sum of two functions which are in similar form but uh, they do give this very pretty exponentially scaling uh, signal that's shown over there. All right, now let's take the case where uh, sigma is equal to zero and, uh, and we are not choosing special values of s. We're just using, like, like, let's be, we let s be whatever it is, in which case we're going to get uh, the value uh, over here of k cos omega t plus j sin omega t, k times cos omega t plus j sin omega t. Again, we get this if you want uh, just by going over here and just setting uh, sigma equals zero. So these terms over here, this term and this term become one. And so you get k cos omega t plus j k sin omega t. And uh, that turns out to be a very interesting function. It's a helix in this space. It's a 3D helix, like one shown over here, like this. And the way to understand this is to think of the projection of this helix or spring. When you project the spring onto the real plane, like so, we get a sinusoid. We actually get the sinusoid, which is cos omega t. And you project it on this other plane over here, this vertical plane over here that I'm drawing. It also is a sinusoid, which is sine omega t. So these two sinusoids, so one sinusoid is like this, and the other sinusoid is slightly phase shifted, like this. So they're not actually in phase, they're time, uh, phase shifted by 90 degrees, because one is cos and one is sine, and sine and cos are phase shifted from each other. But because it's uh, k is a constant, it's just scaled by a time-independent constant. And again, we can see that when you multiply this by k e to the sigma t, so if you have this value over here, which is k e to the sigma t, multiplying this cos omega t plus j sin omega t, we're going to get the spring, but the spring itself will grow bigger and bigger and bigger with time. So it's essentially, it's this sort of this larger and larger spring, and uh, that is also sort of the most general case of the complex exponential sigma. So the, the book has these figures sort of without all scrolled over that you should probably take a look at. But the very nice thing is that all of this comes from just the single uh, function k e to the st. And that's why it's a really nice function to know. And essentially what you're saying over here, a lot depends on the value of s, right? If s has certain forms, we get uh, 
uh, constants. If S has other forms, or then you get into these uh, exponentials. And of course, in the worst case, we have this oscillating system. So a system that's described in this fashion, or a signal described in this fashion, is going to grow without bound, which is not a very good thing to do if you're going to have if you want a stable system. And we'll study this uh, idea of stability uh, later on.